call this Freeware Community High School District 77 Board of Education Finance Committee meeting to order. Thank you. Would you take roll? Yes. Uh, Doug Chairs. We don't have to do this? Oh, we don't have to take roll. Okay. We don't need a quorum or anything. This time I was prepared she to was actually say aye when I called uh, my home. Okay, meeting. you'll get it later. Do we have any public comments this evening? Seeing none, do we have any agenda changes? None. None? Okay, we have a presentation. This evening? We do. Um, I put together a little slideshow for you. And uh, so I'm going to look at my screen while you guys are looking up over my shoulder. Uh, the first thing uh, that we're going to look at is the risk management plan. Uh, that's handout uh, in your folder number four. And so basically, what I did is I went through and uh, kind of reviewed what, we, what was in the plan. Uh, looked at some other plans to kind of compare. Um, so basically the risk management plan is a plan that identifies what expenses can be paid out of tort and what percentage of the expenses that, that can be paid out of tort. Um, oh, I guess I forgot to say this is the outline. I, I, I'm already going rogue. Okay. Uh, so we're going to cover the risk management. We're going to talk about the levy process, fund balances, what the uh, cap levies and uncapped levies, um, and then we're going to give you a summary of the levy. <coughs> so, if you look at the risk management plan, which is uh, handout four, this, again, this identifies everything that um, uh, can be paid out of tort, um, and identifies the percentages that can be paid out of tort, and so there are some changes. I want to point out that the changes that I am proposing in this plan um, increase the chargeable expenses up to about 1.5 million. Last year we had about 1.3 million. So it's increasing the expenses about $180,000 in the risk management plan. So the handout kind of covers it. Um, the changes were because either the percentages were changed or there wasn't the language in there that went along with the percentages that we already had um, or just adjustment in the, the language. Um, uh, and there are some new um, Changes. So all the changes are shaded. So if we look at that, that handout, um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to take a look at this at all. Um, the first change, actually we could probably go to the back. It's probably the easiest. But page seven and eight are the two pages that list all the changes. So superintendent was, uh, and I'm surprised most uh, plans don't have this higher because a lot of my job has to do with limiting risk to the district. Uh, but this is kind of in line with other plans. 5% uh, of it is to establish this uh, plan. Um, and then I increase overseeing all the legal issues, insurance, uh, engineering, architectural services, blah, 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 up to 10%. Now, 100% of that is paid by TOR. All of our legal services are paid. All of our architectural fees are paid. Um, the insurance, we have a couple different insurance uh, that we have, that's all paid by tort. But me overseeing it, um, I increased that. Uh, the next one was the principal, um, just the different work that they do. There's an explanation in the previous pages. Uh, want to increase that up from 20% to 30%. Uh, a big jump is the school nurse, as we start to look at it. Um, she handles all of the uh, physicals that the kids uh, go through. She makes sure the kids are compliant with the physical, make sure they have their insurance uh, document uh, signed. So that's protecting the district. Um, every student she sees, there's a chance that if she gives them the wrong advice. Um, so moving that up from 25 to 75% is a big jump, but I think it's uh, justifiable. Uh, our lab teachers are only at 5%. Uh, but if you talk to our lab teachers, the amount of time they spend talking about safety and making uh, putting in safety uh, procedures together, making sure the kids are safe. Um, we didn't have anything in the director of technology. Um, I started that off at 5%. I know Mike had a, a question, is that is it the right number? I think for now it is. It's something we can look at. This is something we should be looking at every year. I know it's been the first time I really looked at it and made an adjustments. But I'd like to set that at 15%. Um, and then I didn't put it in here. But it's in the write up. 
and it'll be it'll be included. Uh, the school social worker. Uh, the school social worker works with um, our students. She is in charge of our 504 plan. Those are students that have special uh, issues come up, uh, whether it's it's. Uh, we had a student that got hurt in a football game, had a concussion, had lingering effects, so they write a 504 plan, which puts it together accommodations for that student to function in school. Um, so she handles all the 504 plans. Our 504 plans have actually increased um, recently. Um, she works with the special education. She sits in with all those teachers and helps those teachers when they write their um, IEPs. Um, she works with the kids, so she's, you know, when, when the kids are talking about doing harm to themselves or uh, so she, she spends a lot of her time looking out for the district while she's doing her work and that's at 25 percent it wasn't listed in that chart I don't think I didn't have it highlighted you didn't highlight the social work is it, it in it's, there it's, it's there it is there it's 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 it is in here, it's right I didn't yeah, highlight it's, not highlighted. it's, it's, it's in, in here it's in there yeah and the other thing I didn't put in here I didn't highlight it was the special education teachers aides and uh, again, I put 10%. Oh, okay. Those teachers spend uh, a fair amount of time working with students in their accommodations. And uh, if accommodations aren't met, the, the school's liable for that. So I believe, I was glad you found that, because I was getting aggravated myself. But I believe those are all the changes in the plan. Like I said, um, I, th I think they're all appropriate but it does increase the chargeable expenses the district can pay uh, by about $180,000. So I don't know if anybody had any questions on that. That is something we're gonna ask you guys to approve um, in the meeting. You've looked at other risk management plans and mm -hmm. kind of compared to the school nurse, that's such a big jump. Is that about what other it's, risk management It's hit and miss. Have? Some schools don't have it, other schools do. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It's 15 total. 15 total. So it's five percent. Yeah. It's 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 probably not. But it, it, and again, in most plans, that's about where the superintendent is. Now, some of the plans, it's a big school, and so the superintendent has assistants to kind of do some things. But um, I mean, we can look at it. I think down the road, my concern is if we. Increase these any more, then we're going to put the burden on the tort to where we're going to have to raise tort more than what I'm asking you to raise it now. Mm -hmm. And I, I still think the plan I have is a good plan, and it's it's going to keep our expenses paid. It's going to help out the ed fund, but it also doesn't put uh, a burden on the taxpayers because uh, the, if things all go the way they should, the tax rate should go down a fair amount. So I agree with you, and that's kind of what I mentioned at first. Is that, that seems a little low because everything I do is pretty much watching out to make sure we don't get sued. But um, I, I think for now, I think it's in a good place. I think we can look at it next year and, and address it next year if we need, need to. comments on that part? All right, the rest of this is all about the levy. Uh, and most of you guys are all familiar with the levy. Um, again, this is kind of written in, um, in terms of someone who is not familiar with the levy. So I won't spend a lot of time on a lot of it, but uh, what's important to understand is that um, there are certain things that we can have an effect on and there's other things that we don't have an effect on. Um, the different types of funds, everybody knows there's nine funds. There's actually um, several levies that we will deal with that are in the same fund. So like the lease levy comes out of bond and interest, I'm sorry, it comes out of building and grounds. Uh, special education levy comes out of the ed fund. Um, IMRF, Fund 50, it, it has two different levies, IMRF and Social Security. So that's something you kind of have to play around with. Uh, predicted EAV, this is kind of how I base it, is the history. So we're going to look at the history a little bit. 
uh, new construction. Uh, so I talked with each of the Smith and Freeburg to find out what new construction they had. I did not check with San Lafori, uh, but I don't know if there's a lot of new construction in San Lafori, maybe a house or two. Um, and then also the, the overriding concern of setting the EAV too low and then missing out on tax dollars that you can get. So um, this kind of talks a little about the uh, trend of the EAV. Um, if you look at from 2000 to 2008, the EAV increased quite a bit. Uh, almost average 10% a year. Uh, two, two, uh, 2009 through 2014 were not great years. The EAV actually only increased about 0.10% uh, um, a year. So it was very stagnant. With some years it actually went down. I'm sorry, it decreased in average. Uh, 2014 things started turning around a little bit. We've averaged about 2.47. We had a couple of years, or at least one, I think we had a four and a half. Last year was like 2.1%. Um, but there is a fair amount of new construction going on, um, more than what we had last year. Actually, it's about a 40% increase. But this is what the EAV looks like when you plot it out. Um, from here on over, whoopsie. So from here, this is where 2007-18, um, that's the increase that I'm uh, predicting. Of course, it's inflated because of the fear of not um, capturing all the tax dollars. But we've had a, a fairly steady increase in the EAV over the last couple of years. Had a little bit of a sharp, like I said, it was about 4 point something percent, and here was about a 2.1 percent between those two years. Okay. Uh, new construction. Uh, Tony Funderburg gave me a, a, a copy of all of their Building permits with their estimated costs, and it comes up to be $4.5 million of new construction. There's two, actually two new constructions at the industrial park. One of them is over a million dollars itself. Um, I don't remember how many homes there are, uh, but uh, it's, it's a good uh, move in the right direction for construction. When I talked to Smith then, all they talked about was um, there's eight new homes in Smith then going up in uh, this past year. Um, and they also have that bank. Now whether or not they actually get on the tax rolls, I don't know how quick they'll get, but that construction is there. I estimated 2.5 million. Again, that's probably a little high for the eight homes in a bank. But I figure if you average a couple hundred thousand for a home, and then that bank's probably half a million or more, then you're pushing. That's, that's probably not too high. Last year we had about five million in construction, uh, new construction. Um, this year we're looking at about seven. It's about a 40% increase in new construction. So that's part of the reason why I feel somewhat comfortable of estimating high in the EAV. Which um, town is supposed to have this new subdivision going? Both. Oh, both of them are has, um, thank you, just bringing that up. Freeburg already has a road they put in off of Wolf Road. So they actually put one of the, started to put one of the streets in. Now, I've got this number wrong because it seems way too high. But Tony told me when we talked about this, that they sold, and again, sold means what? I don't know. They put a deposit down. 27 of the 30 lots. So if that's the case, then, then you know, you expect, now again, those, I'm not expecting those to be on this year, or, or the taxes for next year. But, uh, and then Smith has the one right to the west of, east of school. Um, and they had a, a final plot uh, approval oh, meeting. It's, it's uh, yeah, there's the school, there's a White House, and then the field. And, and they're trying to, to move into that pretty slow. They're, only, they're gonna put a retirement community in there first, or retirement apartments like they have over here. Well, that was the other thing in Smith and Freeburg is that big addition on the side of the retirement homes, or retirement, whatever you call it. Assisted living center. Assisted living, mm -hmm. that they, they added a big addition onto that. Um, and then the daycare. So Freeburg has actually had quite a bit of construction. but. They're going to ease into that. They're only going to allow, I don't remember what it was, 15 or 24 homes or something like that the first year in um, Smithton. I think that's what, how it's going to work out. They, don't, they just don't want it to impact the school. I, I'm assuming, I didn't go to the meetings, but I, that's my understanding is they don't want it to impact the schools quicker. So, um, I mean, I, I think. 
I think our UV is going to jump. Now, the bad thing when you go to superintendent school is they tell you it's great to have homes, but that also brings expenses because it only brings kids. Right. What you want is industry because that's just cash. So we'll see how this all works out. The only thing I would say about that, the numbers that they gave you, how many of those are actually going to hit the 18? I don't know. I don't know. So, so that's that's the thing. I mean, we're just guessing. And I'll talk about that when we get there. I know, I know that's the one thing that I can remember sitting over here when Mr. Lehman was doing it, and his increases were quite a bit higher, and, and it freaked people out because there was one year it was like a 26% increase or something like that. And, and I mean, as long as you're a percent higher than what the EAB actually comes in, you're fine. It's when you try to go lower and you lose out on tax revenue. And that's always what we're scared about, is that you don't set your EV high enough. Because all of our cap funds are maxed out, and we're putting in dollar value in our uncapped funds. So the max funds, I'm sorry, the cap funds, you're gonna get whatever you're supposed to get. So it's not, unless you, unless you just reduce the tax rate. But the uncapped funds, we put a dollar value. And so, if the, as the EAB goes up, it actually drops the tax rate because it's a less of a percentage of what the right. EAB is. So it's, by estimating, again, I build it in a couple of different places, by estimating high, all, all I'm trying to do is protect us to make sure we collect all the revenue that we're supposed to collect to whenever they set the EAB in March or April, whatever they do. So, does that make sense? It does. I just, when I look at the right on the if we were to stay with the 7%, we wouldn't even need a hearing. It would do the same thing because there's no way it's going to go above that. Your own, your own slides say that's going to happen. Well, I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm also don't want to guess. Last year I felt a lot more comfortable because there, there, there was no indication that we were going to move up. So everything that we heard, we're, we're, we were kind of staying stagnant. And Everything I'm hearing now is things are a lot better than they were. So people are building houses, things are coming in. I don't know what's going to happen with property values. I don't know what's due for assessment. So as those get reassessed and the property values go up, the EAB goes up. So it's, it's just trying to protect. That's all it's doing. And it, it, it requires you know, a hearing at the December meeting. We have to publish something. I think the grade school last year was nine something. Freeburg or uh, Smith and did not, um, like us, did not have a hearing. They were 4.99. I don't know what either schools plan on doing. So. Um, so again, I'm guessing the EAB is going to go up about four and a half. And I'm guessing, but if I'm wrong, and yes, there is room to play, but if I'm wrong, then you know I don't. I, I don't. I just. I'm a little concerned this year about guessing too low. Um, so if we put it at 10%, which is what I've recommended, um, that puts the tax rate, uh, less the bond and interest at 6.98%. Um, and then since it's greater than 5%, we have to have a treatment taxation here. Um, and then they used to just talk about the fund balances. This is something that I'm trying to um, keep. And, and so this is some of the adjustments I've made. Uh, these are not, um, well, Fund 50 is one of them. It's, we're trying to keep one year's expenses, and both Fund 50 and the TORF have increased more than what we anticipated. So we've made some adjustments to try to reflect that. Um, the cap rates, we, we want to try to keep their <coughs> balances as high as we can for unforeseen because we're capped. We can't ask for more than what we already have. Um, so the Ed Fund, I'm just kind of summarizing. The Ed Fund's in, in fairly decent shape. It keeps going up. Um, assuming the uh, EAB keeps increasing, um, I think the election um, with the change in the governor is good news for the evidence-based funding model because he was a big proponent. So I think that's good news. Um, now whatever else political you want to all I'm worried about is evidence-based funding model right now. 
But I think those two things, it's, it, it bodes well for the Ed Fund. Uh, the building grounds the same way. There is uh, some projects that we're going to do that's going to eat into that. Um, the transportation is very healthy, but we, I think we've been doing a pretty good job of trying to keep that updated the last couple of years. With, I think we've purchased <coughs> three buses so far. We're going on a fourth. So uh, <coughs> that's good. Uh, the working cash, we did the transfer last year from the bond and interest to the working cash. Um, and then I'm planning on, um, I, we had a budget of $100,000. I think it's going to be a little bit more than that. But um, uh, for the painting in the lockers, uh, health, life, safety, uh, we've taken a big chunk out of that. So when we show you the, the balances, you'll see that that line's dropped quite a bit. But that's a big part of that is that HVAC project. Um, and I'll talk in the meeting. We've got another health, life, safety project coming up that we're going to kind of dip into that. Uh, and then these two funds here, we pretty much spend those funds um, as we get them. So they don't, we don't even show a balance in there because they're already in another fund. <coughs> so this is all the cap funds. Uh, you can see this is the Ed Fund, this, this blue one here. Uh, it took a huge dive uh, from about fiscal year 9 to 15. It's had a nice little trend going back. It's still moving up. I anticipate it'll keep moving up especially if we kind of keep an eye on what expenses we can pay out of court. Um, and then now that we have that new uh, contract, um, that first year was the highest percentage increase. So we've got a decent percentage increase on those salaries, so I anticipate those. Uh, this is this fund here, this orange. To me, it looks like there's two orange. Is that the fire safety? This is the health line safety. Orange, yellow, and red. Huh? Orange, yellow, and red. Uh, You're on orange right now. I believe, yes. yeah. Okay. That's, so uh, I know, but this one kind of looks orange. Just maybe I should clean the glass. But this is health life safety. So that's the one you see going down. All right. But the others are in decent shape. This is the working cash. Uh, it went up sharply. It's going up a little bit flatter, but that's because we're anticipating spending some of that money. Um, and then what's the blue? The Ed Fund's the blue. And then this is the building. So see, we've got some items budgeted, but it's still healthy at, I don't know, it's about six or seven hundred, I think we're, we're estimating at the end of the year, but we've got some things that we are planning on doing. Um, these are all the cap funds and these are um, the rates. So these rates are set, um, well they're capped, they're maxed out. Um, I mean we could go in and we could reduce them, I, I would not recommend it. But these are the actual amounts that we would levy if we base it on the 296, which is that 10%. Then the uncapped funds, uh, talk about it a little bit. The IMRF, because of retirements um, and we're paying less money for employees, this fund has jumped quite a bit, the balance. And so if, if we stick with the fund balance, um, the theory that the fund balance should just keep one year, we need to sp start spending some of that balance down. So what I'm asking uh, the board is to reduce that levy from 155,000 to 100. Remember we set those base levies last year, talked about that. Well, if we kept that base levy, that balance would keep going up, and we don't wanna do that, we wanna drop it down. So I'm asking the board to reduce that, which is gonna be uh, beneficial. Uh, and then tort, um, were you here when we went through that risk management? No, but I, okay. I read through it. So, so yeah. the, the tort expenses have gone up uh, about $108,000. And because of that, if we kept the tort, which was 1.45, I think, million, if we kept it, the levy at that amount, the balance we would eat through tort in about two years and or three years. And so to kind of stay away from that, I'm asking the board to increase that levy by 50000 what that does is that extends us a little bit of time. Then as we look at the uh, risk management plan, look at future levies, then if we get closer to fiscal year 2020, we can kind of plan a little better than I can plan right now. Uh, bond and interest, it should stay fairly flat. Um, if we see you know, where that's collecting more money or if the balance starts increasing, then uh, uh, we can make adjustments as, as going forward. So this is kind of what the project projections are. This goes to fiscal year 23. So the bond and interest is the blue line. The big drop was that transfer we had to work in cash. 
And then this kind of shows it, it does have a little bit of a balance. Um, and I just projected out the same percentages increase over last year, which was about 7%. This red line is the um, uh, IMRF. And again, we had a big, big jump in its uh, fund balance. And so by lowering that, what it does is it'll work down to, I think the, uh, we're about 230, 240, 230, $240,000 in expenses. So that's what we wanna work down to. So, and, and as we get closer again to fiscal year 23, we can kind of play around with what that needs to be. But we're, this way we're eating into it. Uh, the torque, we ended that pretty quick. Um, it zeroes out um, right after fiscal year 21. So it looks like we can get through 22, but again, we keep an eye on it. I think that's something we can make an adjustments, but I don't, I mean, it doesn't make sense to keep a high fund balance in those accounts. I mean, those are, those are the pay for expenses. Um, we know what those expenses are. We, we can set those, and so I think we need to make those adjustments. Um, so this is just talks about the setting the different levies. Um, this is kind of, and I think it's important to talk about a little bit if the, if the levy increases, the way I figured, as long as the levy increases by 1%, then our tax rate will reduce. Um, if it increases 2.5, it'll go down 4.8 cents. If it goes up higher than 2.5, it'll go down lower than uh, 4.8 cents. So, um, and then the bond and interest is set by the taxpayers. Um, our bond and interest payments did increase um, by $16,000, but because their EV goes up, the actual tax rate is going down on the bond and interest tax rate. So I don't have the full, this just talks about IMRF, which I think I already talked about mainly. Uh, tort levy, we talked about that. So these are the uncapped fund rates. Um, again, setting these values. Um, if the EAV goes up more than 1%, these rates will drop. And the, the main thing is, this is we talk about estimating, and the need to have a truth in taxation. Um, so this is, if there's a better, if you look in your folder, this sheet's in your folder. Um, so this has uh, four different scenarios. I think I just had the single one in here. Oh, this is something, let me, talk about this real quick and if everybody's all right with it, this is kind of how I would like to do it. Uh, we used to go through every single levy and approve every single levy and most districts don't do that. We're not required by law to do that. All we have to do is set, I mean, all we have to do is just set the levy amount and the individual, rev our individual amounts for each levy. We can approve it all at one time. That's what I'd like to do. It would look like that. Um, if we go 10%, these are all the revenues amount. This is what the, uh, we would get in, our, our uh, revenue less the bond and interest, so it works out to be 6.98%, which would require truth of taxation. Now back to this sheet, if you look at the different scenarios, if our EAV came in, it's about the same percentage it was last year, this is actually a little higher, is that first little group of 2.5%, our, um, our rate, tax rate, would drop um, a little over four cents, almost five cents. Um, if the EAV goes up four and a half percent, then we're down, you know, that's about a six percent drop in the tax rate. Um, if it goes up to seven, and the reason I put that in there is, um, that number's not right down at the bottom. That should be the 4.99. I don't know why it's the 3.18. But that's where, if you set it at that amount, that's where you would not have to have your truth in taxation. Um, and then if it goes up to 10%, um, then it's about a 10.5% increase. I'm anticipating it's gonna be closer to four and a half, uh, and that's just a guess. Um, but I, I think to be on the safe side, I, I think we may take a little grief. People may get concerned thinking we're raising their taxes by 10%, but it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, I mean, if we set it at the AV at 4.5 percent. If they looked into it, they're thinking we're raising the tax at 3.09 cents, which we're not. I mean, it's actually going to be a decrease. We did, their tax rate decreased last year as well. It was minuscule, but it decreased. But 
but uh, so I I am recommending that we set it at ten. And uh, but if we set it at the seven, we wouldn't have to have the wouldn't have to have the hearing. The hearing. But if it doesn't come in, if it comes in over seven, it comes in at seven and a half because we, we lost revenue. We lost on Well, if it comes in at twelve and we set it at ten, we lose revenue. Well, right. Yeah. So we I felt a lot more comfortable last year at doing the four point nine nine. Right. Mike, you had brought it up. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? I mean, just what? I, just, I don't believe you're going to do it for seven. There's no way. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that. And I think a lot of the stuff that you got from the city, I, I think those are some that are still in process. And even the ones that aren't, at best case, they're going to prorate them if they even do anything with them this year at all. So I don't, I know over my way, there's several houses being built. thing that would push me to go ahead and say the 10 would be the fact that he's going to put in higher numbers and our uncaps in the 10. And if the EAB comes to a place where we can still either stay flat or reduce the people's tax rates, but take advantage of those numbers we put in the uncaps at 10%? It's the same number. I didn't think it was. It should be. So IMRF is 100. Well, toward is for sure. Yeah. Social Security, 137. I thought I saw one of them that wasn't. Oh. Uh, yeah, the fire safety, I need to adjust that. It should be the same. They all should be the same. So so we, we should be putting in just a dollar value. No, I agree with For that. the same dollar value, no matter what, what the EAB is for the uncapped. Yeah. But yeah. that's wrong on the sheet. So. I guess where I'm going is I would prefer to have the higher numbers on the uncapped so that if we can still juggle all this when the EAB comes in and still keep the tax rate less than it was last year or equal to last year, I think we should do that is what I'm trying to say. So I'm saying that there's some of these funds <clears throat> that you may want to have higher numbers in there because once he sets that number, he can't go above that number. I don't know if I'm making any sense at all. Yeah. Um, what do we need now? Well, well, so for Social Security, we don't. That's set. IMRF, we don't. Health, life, safety, we're, we're, that's actually capped. That's why it's going up. That's capped at five, uh, five cents. And so that's why that number's going up, because it's a higher EAB. Mm -hmm. Least levy, see, the least levy should, that, that's, oh, that's capped. So that's, uh, where were we at? Da, 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 da. Tort. <coughs> I think these are all right. Okay. The towards the one we're thinking about right. off the top of the head, when we look at 22. And when you've got that, we lose it at the end of 22, is that based on a certain amount of increase every year? In the yeah, I think, I think um, no, it's based on the expenses going up. Okay. So the, I think I base it on 3%. The, the expense is going up 3%, which is, you know, we, we don't have another 3% increase in salaries and benefits. But there are some other things we talked about. Um, that are going to probably raise our expenses. So that'll raise the, the, the need for the tort later on. And that's why we learned that the tort goes flat at 22. If there was an opportunity to keep everybody's tax rate less than it was last year and still add to that, that's where I'm at. If we're going to have to do the hearing anyway, if we're going to do the hearing, then I would suggest that. Well, we wouldn't if we did the 7%. It looks like we're not going to be up to. So I didn't, I didn't know what your thoughts were, but like you said about the heartburn, with the, just with the election, just go in the paper, so all you gotta do is put in the paper and it's heartburn. And I've, right. I've seen, at the, this meeting, I think one year we have people come in. And I think that's when we have the, you know, the 20 excluded. But generally speaking, okay. we had one one group come in, that's when it was like 26%. 26%. And so, you know, we had to explain, this is not right. what your tax rate is, this is just us estimating 
what the value of the district is going to be. So, I mean, I, I'm willing to take the hard part. I mean, I'm willing to answer questions on the phone and explain that to people. Do we really believe that we're going to be up like $27 million? No. Mm -hmm. That's what this says. Sure, I know it does. It's like, I, even with a reassessment and everything, I can't imagine what we could come up anywhere near that number. So you're just covering yourself so we don't lose any money. <clears throat> That's all we're doing is just raising that up, that number up, just so we make sure we cover any expenses or a, any revenue that may come. May come in. And I, I could tell you, I know Mr. Lehman used to estimate a lot higher than that. And so it was it was pretty nerve-wracking last year to go to four to four point nine nine. Because I just was like, oh. and I think I thought I said four percent last year. My personal opinion, I would think this year we get by with 4.99. I think next year is the year that we're going to have to go above because I think that's when all this is going to hit. I think that that new daycare, the industrial park, the houses in my way, the stuff they're starting to build on Willow Road, it's going to all, that's when I think it'll hit. I don't, I don't see how it's going to hit 18. Right. Well, the daycare is open now. Sure. So that's should kick in. So that's, if we go with that, I think that 7.07 .07 is correct. And I don't know why the number on the bottom is not correct, but that's about a 20 million, $19 million increase from 2.69 to 2.88. I think we'd be safe by that. And that's fine. I mean, have to have that's fine. Truth and Dean, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I kind of, like Greg said, I. I had no problems with sitting in a truth and tax uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I mean, you all make good points, and basically, to me, everybody's guessing here anyway. Right. And and, and, and I, I'd, I'd rather see it as presented. I don't know if anybody will show up. It's very just, seldom they do. But just the uneasiness of um, the community. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of people say a lot of things, but they don't show up to a board meeting. That, that's true. You, you know, I mean, and, and we've seen that, that plenty of times. Well, like you said, that you know, they think their tax bill is going up that right. much, and, and once you kind of explain it to them what, what's going on, some of them get it, right? You know, some of them don't. But, right. uh, but uh, I know I I have no no problem with with it being as presented here. Angie, thoughts? I don't know that I'm educated enough to make a good thought on this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, being on the board for three years, you think I'd understand this better. I get an, I, I get the idea, but I don't think I'm educated enough to have an opinion. I did, right? I did, I did, what Dean said, we had people come in who I don't think fully grasped everything, and when you sit down with people that work with this day in, you know, <laughs> day out, but, but have knowledge of it and explain it. I think most of them are kind of okay and, and breathe easier. I mean, nothing's ever erupted. It's just going to make them a little warm. Because even if we had to explain this, calms down. In, in the end, you're, you're going to tell them, well, your tax rate's going down. Right. right. 0.06. How much does it cost us to advertise it? It's about 100 bucks, I think. You know, I was thinking about that earlier. Yeah. If you put some kind of that's free. Yeah, the letter to that. No, we actually have to put in that. I mean, it, it has to be a black box. It's specific. Okay. It, it, okay. The black box has right. to be so the right thickness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, but that, I think they charge us. I don't remember what it is. Um, and I, I'll kind of probably go along with what um, Mike's saying. So last year I'm up in baseball, and a, one of the dads I know came up to me and said, "So you're." Phone been ringing off the hook? I said, no. Well, that's when the tax bills went up. Well, everybody's taxes went up. Mm -hmm. And I 
said, well, it wasn't because of me. I said, our tax rate went down. And I'm not in charge of what your value of your property is, and I'm not in charge of the multiplier. I'm only in charge of, you can, I'm only in charge of the tax rate. And our rate went down. Not a lot, but it went down. Well, the, what it kicks it up, it's not the AP, it, it, it's, the mul it's the multiplier and, the, yeah, and, then, and then the assessment. And last year, a lot of people got reassessed, but they also threw that uh, multiplier in. And don't ask me how they come up with that. It's basically to try to even out the tax and I can try to pay more. What's broken in the system is the fact that the EAP is broken. Is broken. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's in reverse order. Um, so I would, again, no matter what we do tonight, I want to relook at March when we get the AV, mm -hmm. just to see where we're at. And I, I will tell you that there is a grant out there that um, uh, Mark uh, Janish and I talked about. Uh, the filing date's in January, and it's a one-time grant, and so I'm kind of leery because if you get it one time, it could basically it could, it'll lower your um, tax rate because you don't have to levy as much. You could drop your levy by whatever you get your uh, uh, grant for, and it, I, I think it's about two hundred thousand dollars. So it, it would it would drop our our uh, tax rate by I forget what it is a nickel or something or well no it'd be more than that it'd be about seven six or seven cents because a nickel gives us about one hundred thirty hundred forty thousand and then the next year. When they don't have the grant, well, then your tax rate just okay. jump back up. But it still would be nice to get it. Where's so we're going to look at the state, the state, state of Illinois. What bucket? Where does it go? Which bucket does that fit in? It, it basically your everything stays the same. So you would your your capped your uncapped would stay the same. It would it would reflect your cap. that by December and we don't know if, again the state we don't know if we get the grant until January and then once you get the grant then you can decide whether or not you want to use it or not so so I haven't applied for it yet. Spend all your money and then maybe we'll you guys are at the money. conference and you guys are talking and then you can decide whether you want to spend it again work as lobbyists Order of the events. Yeah. And they know that. I don't, I don't know why it is the way it is. It's crazy. Loud enough. I mean, yeah. no, if there's an opportunity, for sure. But it, it is not something that hasn't been talked about for years and years and years. I mean, everybody's tax cycle would have to change. Monroe County is in big problems right now. They're not going to collect them. Sales tax down there. We started July, collecting in July. And they don't do He's got money. basically his money now. They haven't even started collecting. We've got all our, I think we have it all. I think you're in the 90s. Right? All our um, um, real close. Local. Starts <coughs> with the money. Monroe hasn't collected his dime. They haven't even said it yet. But they have that 1% sales tax. That's not enough. Sweet. I know. We keep, keep waiting about to read it in the paper about their schools thing. I don't know what they're doing. So, oh, this is just the whether you want to do a truth in taxation or not. And I, I think it sounds like we are. The consensus is yes. Yeah. And then, thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> I should, what questions do you have? How about if you start running? That's supposed to elicit more <laughs> questions than not. I talked to my husband about that. He's like, no. Yeah. You are not allowed to run for office. <laughs> what else? Um, no, besides this, want to change some of this around <laughs> or try. I put a flyer out to the, to the county to let us know the minute that they get the ABs established and what that looks like, so that you only have like a three-week period. You don't even have a five-week no, period. No, you don't. You don't. It came to us, and we had to have the answer before the board meeting. Right. Yeah, we'd have to call a special meeting if it, if, if it comes back really totally different than we anticipated. Right. 
Or we can talk about it in February and say, well, if this happens, do this, or if that happens, or we can have special, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we get that from Holbrook. And it's, well, here's your thing. You've got, let me know by next Friday. Dina says three weeks. I don't know. I don't know. It could be three weeks, but. But it's not enough of a cycle. Next Friday is not like a. On a planned regular meeting. Motion to adjourn our meeting. We do. Meeting. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Girls, all those in favor say aye.